Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. A lot of tech stocks have really taken it on the chin over the last year or two, but that means there's starting to be some opportunities for long-term investors who are looking for some real asymmetric investment opportunities in the market. One of the companies that I think has great potential is Spotify. This is a company that started as a music streaming service, really making the economics of streaming work for record labels and artists. When Remember when Napster kind of broke that industry, but it was Spotify that really brought them out of that. Now the company is moving into podcasts, audiobooks, even video, adding things like advertising. I think there's really a lot of great ways that Spotify can be a benefit to artists, to listeners, and to investors. So that's the stock I wanna dig into today. My name is Travis William. Thank you for watching Rive Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube and don't forget to check out the Molly Pool's top 10 stock picks at fool.com forward slash Rive. The big picture here with Spotify is that they wanna own your ears. That's really the overarching strategy for the business and it simplifies what they're doing. They're not trying to make hardware. They're not trying to be a tech giant like a lot of the other companies they're competing with. They just want to do great audio products and so that's the framing with which we need to look at this company. There are two main businesses right now, music, which from a monetization standpoint is dominated by their premium services, their subscription services, and then podcasts. That's really dominated by the advertising side of the business. There are options to subscribe to podcasts, but right now most of those podcasts are monetized through advertisements. On the music side, ironically, that is Spotify's biggest business, its most important business today, but there's really limited upside because there's three or four major record labels. Spotify needs to have all of the content, all of the music that they have on their Spotify platform. And so they have very little negotiating power. Margins on the premium side of the business have been between 25 and 30%. Management thinks they can get that up to 30 to 35% long-term, but really there's no opportunity to get to what we would think of as tech type margins in the 50, 70, 80% range. That's just not possible in music given the bargaining power that those labels have. But that's okay because that can be just a solid business from which to start from. Spotify has nearly half a billion users now, and that continues to grow largely on the back of music. But it's podcasts where I think there's a lot of exciting growth opportunities. And I highlighted this recently in a deep dive that I did on asymmetric investing. I will put a link to that in the show notes so that you can look at that. It's free if you wanna look at that newsletter. And I'm gonna be highlighting investments almost every week that I think have a 10X or more opportunity for investors. So this is the kind of stock that I wanna start with, is a company with a ton of upside. So let's look at that podcasting business. As I said, podcasting is really supported by advertising. Advertising is still a relatively small part of Spotify's business, but it's actually up 340% since the first quarter of 2018. So that's really tremendous growth in the ad business. And I think we're really just getting started. You can see from this chart here that Margins have actually been pretty disappointed in advertising. And, you, and there was actually a big drop in margins from the 2010s when this business kind of got off the ground to 2020. And the reason for that is advertising actually includes all of the podcast costs. So when you hear Spotify sign a deal with Joe Rogan or acquire Bill Simmons, the ringer, or sign a deal with the Obamas to do a podcast, when they're doing those tens, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of deals. All of that cost is included in advertising. So you can see here that revenue from advertising is right now is about $400 million per quarter, but there's a ton of cost that goes into those exclusive podcast deals that really helped grow the podcast business. And management has said that they're gonna focus less on that going forward. I think the strategy here is Spotify needed to establish itself as a leader in podcasts. If you are a podcast listener, you may go to Apple Podcasts, you may go to Stitcher, you may actually listen to things on YouTube. How does Spotify stake out a sustainable position in that business? One way is to just have exclusive and really popular exclusive. So they wrote some really big checks to be able to do that. But over time, that's not the way that they want the business to work. They actually want creators to put their content on Spotify a lot, very similar to what YouTube does. What I'm doing here in posting this video on YouTube I'm a creator posting this on YouTube, hoping that you find it. And then YouTube helps me monetize because there are advertisements. Spotify is taking that exact same playbook, but doing it with audio in the podcast business. Creators can put their podcasts on Spotify and then Spotify will actually dynamically insert an ad that's 
fitting for the listener as they're listening on Spotify. That's something that you can't do with any other platform, at least in an audio only standpoint. We do know that YouTube is starting to try to get into this business. So that's, I think the biggest competitor, but right now Spotify is the one company that's just focused on audio. And so I think that's a really great position to be. The other thing to think about with podcasts is the discovery side. Spotify has done a really good job over the last couple of years, helping music artists find new listeners. And the idea there is that Spotify allows you to both advertise on their platform, basically insert your songs into playlists where people might find them enjoyable and then start following you as an artist. And then also is building out more and more tools to have basically a social feed on Spotify. So connect with your audience as people follow you, sell them merchandise, sell them tickets. These are features that they are starting to roll out on the platform. Really makes this a little bit more of a social network. It's a little bit stickier from a user perspective. And think about the same thing from a podcast perspective. How do you find new podcasts? Well, Spotify is going to play that discovery role. The one thing that I think they've done really well is build tools for both video and audio that you can then share on other social networks. So not everybody's going to be on Spotify, but if you make a post on Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook, and then it points back to Spotify, that's actually a great way for podcasters to find new listeners. Just do a little short clip, something that's shareable, and it can go out on multiple social media platforms and point back to Spotify. That's really how they hope to grow the business long-term. So from the ad side, I think they can continue to grow revenue. I would expect 20, 25% growth is probably the target long-term. And then the margins, instead of bouncing around break even, I would expect those gross margins to start to creep towards a more 50% to 70% number. That seems really high, but typically that's the kind of margins you see in an advertising business, like a Facebook, like Google. We don't typically see margins in the teens or single digits. And those margins on the ad side are not going to be limited in the same way that they are on the music and on the premium side. So that's where I think there's a lot of upside. From an optionality standpoint, we're already starting to see more video on Spotify. They're adding books. They have alluded to other verticals where they can kind of take this same playbook and just add it to other content verticals. I think that's really a great position to be in. This is not a cheap stock by any means because Spotify is not generating a net income right now, but this is a growing company. It's growing its user base. It's growing revenue. I really like the ad business and the potential there. If they're able to both grow revenue and expand margins, this could be an extremely profitable business. And I want to put the 10 X potential into perspective here. I did this, what I call back of the envelope math in the post, but to 10 X Spotify would need to be about a $253 billion company 10 years from now. Is that attainable? If we assume that there's a 25 price to earnings multiple, that means that Spotify would have to generate $10.1 billion in earnings in 2023 at a 15% net margin, which again would be fairly low compared to a lot of other technology companies. That means Spotify would have to generate about $67 billion in revenue. That sounds like a lot, but between now and then that's an 18.4% compound annual growth rate. Between 2017 and 2022, Spotify's growth rate was 23.5%. So that's significantly slower growth over the next 10 years than what we've seen over the last five years. That's a lot of growth, and there's a lot of ifs and question marks for Spotify. But this is the kind of asymmetric opportunity that I'm going to be covering a lot here on YouTube and in asymmetric investing. So please subscribe there. Subscribe here on YouTube. I really appreciate everybody watching. Let me know what you think about Spotify and its opportunities. I'd love to hear just, is this a service that you use? I think it's one that I find myself using more and more all the time. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you here next time.